All right, so I know some of you have definitely been wondering where have the Rex Finance videos been? And well, this is one of those places. I've been busy buying myself a Tesla Model 3 and I'll get out and kind of circle around the car. It's got some bugs on it. It's not the cleanest right now because I drove it all the way from Kansas City to Lincoln, Nebraska. But this took up a lot of time, getting the insurance figured out, the financing figured out, all that stuff took time. So that's part of the reason I've been away. Other reasons I've been away have just been the fact that I am extremely busy with school right now. I've had like five exams in the last two weeks, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to get back into these videos. So I'm going to do a quick circle around the vehicle so you guys can see what I purchased. And then we'll get into these three stocks for April. <laughs> White Tesla Model 3, 2021 edition. I didn't cash out a Queen Spark or anything to buy it though, so it's just really, really nice. You can see on the front, we've got plenty of bugs. I'm gonna clean this up before I make the video, but we'll see soon. All right, guys, the Tesla's all cleaned up and in tip-top shape. Unlike my Robinhood stock market portfolio, and it just so happens that the stocks I cover on this channel and that I invest in in my Robinhood stock market portfolio are the growth stocks and speculative stocks that have been hit the hardest over the past few weeks. And I know a lot of you guys that watch YouTube videos are in those same stocks. But what this dip has done is it cycled out lots of weak hands. A lot of people had just gotten into the market over the past couple months. And after this bad experience, they're never going to invest again. So I firmly believe that if we have not reached the bottom yet, we are just about to hit that bottom because eventually those weak hands, the new investors that don't want anything to do with the stock market anymore, there's a limited number of those out there. And as valuations continue to drop, eventually you're going to run out of sellers and the buyers are going to outpace these sellers again. So I'm a firm believer in Warren Buffett's quote that says the stock market is a tool to transfer money from the impatient to the patient. One of the sayings I say a lot on this channel is that patience pays and I truly believe that and I think that's part of the reason I was so blessed to have a thousand percent portfolio return in 2020. If you have patience that the majority of other investors don't have, you're probably going to make a lot of money. But what people don't realize is that growth in speculative stocks are really risky. And if you don't have a stomach that can handle the lows of speculative investing, you should not be a speculative investor. You never want to be too emotionally attached to the highs because then you'll be too emotionally attached to the lows and you're going to make bad decisions. So I guess what we could say is my channel here at Rex Finance is quite a bit different from the majority of other YouTubers out there in that I don't have a brand new stock pick every single day of the week, right? I have a handful of stocks and companies that I truly believe in that I've done in-depth research on and I understand the company's top to bottom and when the market shakes out the weak hands like this it doesn't phase me because I believe in the companies and with the majority of the companies out there over the past few weeks nothing has changed fundamentally with them nothing has changed that deters me from the bullish thesis that I founded with those companies so I am not phased whatsoever and I 100% believe that we will be back at portfolio all-time highs soon Sooner than later. I truly believe any market dip we get like this is a blessing in disguise and if you have cash to take advantage of it, again, you're going to be way better off than the majority of other investors. It goes against your own intuition and another saying I like to say is retrain your brain because again, it goes against your own intuition. Most people sell their shares when markets are at all time lows and then they buy shares when the markets are all time highs. That's where the retrain your brain philosophy comes in. It should be the other way around. You should be buying heavy on these dips if you truly believe in the companies and if you really want to take profits at the market all-time highs, that's when you should be selling your shares. All this stuff I help teach in the members-only Discord server, which also gets you access to my buy and sell alerts and early access to stocks I'm looking at, etc. So if that stuff interests you, hit the join button down below located right next to the subscribe button. I'm sure there'll be comments down below saying how great the membership is. And honestly, I might be biased, but I think our membership, the Discord server and community we have developed there is second to none. So if you guys wanna be a part of that, again, hit the join button down below. So without further ado, let's start discussing these three stock picks I have for April of 2021. All three stocks are actually stocks that I am not currently invested in. Two of the three I have previously been invested in and I'm looking at buying back into the stocks. And then the third is one I have never been invested in. So let's go ahead and start with that stock that I have never been invested in, in Palantir. 
That is stock pick number one, ticker symbol PLTR. This is a data or data analytics company. So its revenues are primarily software based, which is high margin, which in the long run will hopefully make this company a very profitable business. This stock has fallen victim like so many other stocks to the market downtrend and we're sitting in the low 20s right now and if we stay here in the low 20s, I will be buying shares left and right. Palantir has worked with multiple government agencies, which is a big deal for many different reasons, and I'll get into that. But to give a few examples of the government agencies this company's worked for, we have the CIA, the Department of Defense, the FBI, and so many other agencies. If you guys do your own research, you will see all these different agencies. But the reason it's a big deal that Palantir has government customers is because government customers and government contracts are sticky. They're not going to pull out of their contracts. And if they trust you with one contract, chances are the government's going to trust you with many, many others. And just to prove this point, the revenue they brought in from their government contracts last year had 73% year over year growth. I'm sure many of you that are watching this video are aware, but I am personally invested in CleanSpark. And one of the primary reasons I started investing in the company is because it also has contracts with the US government. Above all else, I think the most important thing about having government contracts is it shows that if the government can trust your business and what you provide, what individual or what organization or what company could not trust that company? The United States government, perhaps the most powerful government in the world, is trusting Palantir for their data analytics and their software solutions. On top of this, we have IBM and PG&E that are both customers of Palantir's. So what has investors really psyched about this company is not necessarily the fact that they have these government contracts. It's the fact that they've been increasingly working with commercial customers. And this really gives investors hope that Palantir is on the road to profitability much quicker than previously anticipated. In my Discord server, this stock actually started out as a joke because one of my moderators, Stock Jockey, is very, very high on Palantir. He's been on me to buy shares of the company for a long, long time, and I just have not. But one day I went out of my way and bought one share of the company, so it's kind of a joke. But honestly, this is turning into a legitimate investment opportunity to me in my eyes. And again, if it stays in the low 20s, I'll be buying into the stock. Their commercial or enterprise revenue grew at 30% year over year. So beyond the government revenue growing, we also have the commercial and enterprise revenue growing, which again is giving investors hope that profitability is in sight. So your enterprise, your commercial customers, again, are your IBMs or your PG&Es that already are customers of Palantir's. This is a stock that Kathy Wood has been buying very, very heavily, and I think that's part of the reason this stock has been on so many people's radars lately. On top of this, the industry that Palantir is involved with, the AI industry, is growing at 42% compounded annually, and it's expected to have that growth rate until 2027. And we all know on my channel, I love companies that are in industries that are growing at high rates, compounded annually like Palantir is. Stock pick number two is a stock that I was previously invested in, and it's ticker symbol XL. Today, they actually released their earnings report for quarter four, and they gave projections for quarter one revenue. After hours, the stock is down 10%. I never thought in my lifetime I would see XL Fleet have a share price of less than $10 with the way electric vehicle stocks were being priced in the stock market. But again, these valuations have come down drastically and in my eyes, it's provided a pretty good buying opportunity for most of these stocks. Now, the reason I'm including XL Fleet is because they're down 10% after hours to no fault of their own. They gave revenue projections for quarter one of $1 million, and I think this is part of the reason investors are selling out. And in comparison to their $10 million in revenue for quarter four, that's obviously a really, really low number, 10% of that number, in fact. But again, this is to no fault of their own, and it's part of the reason I view this as a great buying opportunity for XL Fleet. The reason this is no fault of their own is because we've had a microchip shortage, especially in the electric vehicle industry. We've even seen it at Tesla. We also had analysts that were projecting, I think around $13 million in Q4 revenue. And we came in with around $10.5 million in revenue. So we missed on revenue. And again, this was partly to do with the chip shortage, but also there's the fact that analysts didn't have much to go off of. XL Fleet has not been a public company for very long. We have not seen financials on the company until now for the most part. So I think the analysts that were covering the stock were kind of blinded when they were making their projections. So as long as this chip shortage subsides over time, I think this is a really good buying opportunity for this company. It currently has about a billion dollar valuation on it, which in the long run, in three to five years from now, seems very, very cheap. 
So I will probably be buying shares of this stock as long as it stays below $10 per share. Just to recap, we've had analysts give earnings per share and revenue estimates that really weren't anywhere close. The company actually beat on earnings and missed on revenue. And again, I don't think the analysts had much to go off of. And we also had the company come out and say they're only projecting about a million dollars in revenue for quarter one due to the microchip shortage. But over time, the microchip shortage will subside. And again, I think this is a good buying opportunity for this company. The third stock pick is actually one that I was invested in quite a while ago, and I actually made some pretty good money on this investment. I bought shares originally at $5 per share, and I ended up selling at around $20 per share. But as the valuation has been almost cut in half, I think, again, this is a pretty good buying opportunity for this company. The ticker symbol is FLUX, Flux Power. They manufacture batteries primarily for lift trucks and forklifts, but they also manufacture batteries for warehouse robotics, along with manufacturing batteries for solar power powered charging stations for electric vehicles. So I think in a way this third stock pick could be kind of a secondary play for Biden's infrastructure package because we all know that electric vehicle charging stations are going to be involved in the infrastructure package. Flux Power will be a secondary beneficiary if they provide these batteries for these charging stations. And obviously if electric charging stations aren't powered by clean energy sources, it kind of defeats the purpose of having electric vehicles in the first place because if charging stations don't have clean energy sources at their roots, producing the electricity for the charging stations releases just as much emissions into the air as driving traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. I would say for this stock, anywhere below $12 per share is where I will be buying back into it. I think all three of these stocks are great buys currently. If there's a stock here you're bummed I didn't mention, it doesn't necessarily mean I don't think it's a good buy currently. I just had to cut my list down to three stocks and I think these are three great opportunities to buy in. Let me know if you own any of these stocks down in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you plan on buying any shares of these stocks that I presented today. If you guys are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, be sure you guys hit that subscribe button. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button as well. I'll be back with a brand new video next week. Peace out.